Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back and take two. Yeah, we got to the very end of this video and then uh, the system crashed inexplicably. And I know it crashed because we're touching on really touchy subjects. Make sure you are subscribed to all three channels, Evolutionary, EE Arts, and Hearts Own. So here, this has been something that a lot of people have been talking about at Buzz. The deep water recovery robot Victor 6000s made it to the ocean floor to begin searching for the missing Titanic sub. Note how they are calling it the Titanic sub. It's a sub that was exploring the Titanic with people on board that are definitely rich, famous, wealthy, uh, beyond most people's belief uh, and, and ability to perceive. And all the attention is here on this group. Meanwhile, you do have boats sinking with like hundreds of illegal migrants and nobody blinks an eye. You know, it shows you where we're always looking at. And, and of course, we look where they point to because this is where the control system is always pointing. So this Victor 6000 has arms that can cut cables, dislodge a trapped or stranded vessel, as well as fix the cable onto the sub that will allow it to be winched up to the surface. All this is happening as they say the oxygen is either about to uh, expire, no more oxygen, no more chance at all, or it already has. Again, it's, it's like a big, big movie production in so many ways. Now, of course, we are you know, always sending prayers for anybody that's in distress. But again, it just feels like there's a lot of significance to this. Titanic, Titanic. Think of the story of the Titanic. Well, you know, and I mean, you have to look at it and look at where they're directing the attention. And these beings understand how energy works. So when you direct attention, attention where attention flows, energy is going to go. So they, for whatever reason, they want a lot of energy behind this. Oh, well, the reason is because they want to implement a new banking system. And I'll just cut to the chase. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the reason. And, and again, when we talk about the Titanic, and we're going to go into detail uh, in regards to that. But let's take up the root word of that, Titan. And the battle of the elder gods against the titans. Oh, yeah. The battle of the draconian Anunnakian Egegian system against the titans in many ways, you know, have been viewed as personifications of natural forces. But you could also view them as beings that went by natural order. And what we have now is not natural in any way, shape, or form. It's completely artificial. Uh, AI, artificial intelligence. And here you see this tweet. Well, isn't this interesting? Members of the few on board. Anna Rothschild was involved in the company that created the submarine. Oh, yeah, that's very interesting. As you look at this particular gentleman uh, who's on board, Vice Chairman Engro Corporation, Dawood Hercules, and, you know, a, a board member of the Princess Trust, board member of SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute, member of the few. So there's most definitely symbology going on here. There is symbology. Think about this. What are they looking at? They're looking at the Titanic. How did the Federal Reserve come into being? A quick and easy tutorial. Build a luxury ship, invite those that who are opposed to central banking onto the ship, and sink the ship. There you go. Yeah, Guggenheim, Benjamin Guggenheim, the Guggenheim Museum, New York, Isa Strauss, and Jacob Astor. They all oppose the new Federal Reserve Bank. These million, these these billionaires would be worth about 11 billion uh, when this was put together. All three of these men, they say were on board the Titanic when it sank. Again, do we know for sure? No. Um, it is curious. Absolutely it is curious. I mean, you know, do we know that they went down with the ship? Was this all a ploy? So they're kind of giving us something, you know, exposing something. Because, again, we have to always accept things on our own. Yeah, the humans are slaves on that planet. Yeah, but they want to be. 
they want to be slaves. They they worship us. They they give us their power. They ask us. They say, "Not my will be done." Right. You know, they set things up so that uh, we're kind of in a pickle. But when I when I look at these two beings, and you know, I kind of feel where are they? These men, I don't feel that they went through a great hardship when the ship sank. I feel that they were pampered until the day that they decided to leave their bodies. I, I'm not picking up energy of a very negative kind where there was an abrupt um, stop in, in life. So it's just curious the energy that I feel with these three. And, and I don't know, you know, you look at this whole situation and there is so much more information behind it than just what is at face value this is like one of the biggest advertisements of you know the world is going to change and technology i mean there's so many layers behind what they're just putting out there on the on the mainstream right now no oh, absolutely there's always hidden meanings hidden meanings and you know again the people that are in control the beings that are in control understand you know again when we're in a body, it's just a temporary thing. <clears throat> so, you know, what is the Kardashev scale? I want to put that out there for you guys. What you're looking at is an interpretation of a Dyson sphere, which is harnessing energy of a sun. And, you know, why would you throw that in there? Because, again, there, th there's a much bigger play here. There's a much bigger play going on. Again, there is a creator of this uh, particular universe. And yes, that being is a very, very benevolent being. But what happens is, you know, people, other beings, portray themselves using generic terms. Because again, when you use the term God, it's been used to cover all sorts of beings. And in reality, uh, you know, anybody could be viewed as a god throughout all of our history that simply had a greater understanding or higher technology than the masses. And, you know, J.P. Morgan, here you go, we were talking about a, a red shield, and, you know, being in the background of this, and when we look to Aster, Aster is one of the, you know, one of the top families in in the secret societies for sure Th these people they all intertwine <clears throat> because they're put there in their positions of power for a purpose they understand the bigger picture jp morgan canceled his long-awaited journey just hours before its proposed departure when we look to you know the towers the twin towers which some have equated with the symbol of of titans again when we looked at new york city 9 11 twin towers yeah there were people that all of a sudden you know a, a whole group didn't go to work that day yeah w what did they know you know, three of the wealthiest men on earth who were against the creation of the federal reserve bank happened to be invited on board for its maiden voyage and, you know, again, it went into an iceberg field, went down. And, you know, again, no mention of, of, you know, unfortunately, you know, history just kind of ignores the average person. I mean, all those just peasants that were rounded up for all these big, big, big battles throughout history, nobody knows anything about them. We only know about the ladies and the lords, the aristocrats, the politicians, uh, again, those that are really causing the problems in the first place. So when we look at what's going on today, it's all about CBDC. And here you have the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, the UN. Again, oh, that's curious, isn't it? Now, again, everything that they take, they, they will take symbols and twist them, just, just like we saw over in Germany. As you take a, a symbol, which is a solar wheel in Hinduism, put it on its edge and turn it into something else. But what they do is they harness the power. They're always harnessing power. They're always harnessing energy from everybody around them. Again, think back to the Dyson sphere that we're talking about, trying to hijack the energy from source and from the creator of this universe that it's freely distributing to everybody in the creation, everybody experiencing this reality, no, they want to take control of that energy.
They want to take control of the source energy that lies within every single one of us. So the IMF doesn't think that nation state CBDCs will work. They got to have one and it's a global CBDC platform. They're moving very, very fast on this. And of course, there's one little blip that has to be done, you know, that hashtag WW3. And when the power structure is shifted and the BRICS nations, you know, with that fine diningware system is, is, is in control fully, then they could just implement it. And, you know, who cares, you know, what anybody says, this is what that, that's what their mindset is. So when you look at this insane, astonishing jet stream leaves scientists at a loss for words, they have no explanation for this. Note how extreme heat we have up here. You know, again, this jet stream is highly unusual. Yeah. Well, you know, again, those that have some knowledge will say, well, you know, when the magnetosphere is in decline, it, you're going to see all sorts of craziness. And, you know, we are literally going to have multiple poles, not just a north and a south at some period of time. And again, it, not saying that that's not an, uh, uh, an accurate concept, but what we're saying is there's technology in play that might take something that might happen 200, 300 years down the, down the road, maybe a thousand years down the road, maybe 2000 years down the road. And they're trying to trigger it now because it suits their purposes. Uh, you have to recognize they put so many satellites up in orbit. You know, Elon's been putting so many up in orbit and he's playing the good cop, you know, to many out there playing the bad cops. But still, it's all part of that same agenda. And right now, they're all coming out of the woodwork talking about climate change, climate change, climate change. This is crazy. This is insane. Look at the look at these departures from normal. Look at all that red up in the North Atlantic heading into the North Sea. It's it's crazy. We've never seen anything like this. Well, you know, again, if, if you use technologies, can you imagine, you know, using lasers to heat up? A planetary system what do you think is going to happen i know i i look you know at the uh, possibility factor is it possible and is or is it probable that certain beings that control the entirety would would they dare put something up there that could manipulate the situation so they could call it something that it's not so they could get their way into further control? Is it possible or probable? Hmm. You got to ask. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can't put anything past them. So, you know, we've talked about this many times before in different videos, the Carter chef scale. This this comes about from a renowned scientist that came up and, you know, basically it was a Russian astrophysicist and he was looking for signs of extraterrestrial life. And he basically came up with this hypothesis that over time, uh, civilizations will learn how to harness the energy of their planet and they'll gain power and complete control over the planet. They would be able to control the weather at will. Well, China has said it wants to control its weather by 2025. So as the U.S., you know, yeah, we understand the reality of geoengineering, but it goes way beyond that. Type 2 civilization, by the way, we are 0.7, according to what Carl Sagan said before he passed on, 0.7. We're not even at, at 1 yet. So, meaning we're on the way to having power and control over the planet. Now, again, this is what they show but we're not there yet. But but the reality is we're beyond that. Power and control on the whole star system is a type two. And then type three, power and control on an entire galaxy. And then type four over an entire universe. Because each universe is just simply a cell. Every universe is just a single cell. When we look to that Dyson sphere, why is there one in the Vatican? Hmm. Again, it's got to be hidden in plain sight. It's got to be hidden in plain sight. Pope Leo, hey, this myth of Christ has served us well. It's given us a lot of power, a lot of control, a lot of wealth. The Vatican is, you know, the most uh, rich private entity that exists. So when we look at the record-breaking heat wave that's brutal in Texas, it feels like over 125 in many places, 
should be no surprise. It should be no surprise when we see, you know, all the tornadoes out there. This is uh, around Akron, Ohio on 63. Well, it should be no surprise. The extreme weather is, is just going to be part of this. When you start to look at the Bible and you look at the book of Revelation as, as basically the extraterrestrials telling you what they're going to do to you, uh, yeah, then it all clicks. Well, you know, <clears throat> sorry, and you look at those words, you know, harness the power of the stars. <clears throat> when you begin to understand energy and understand the universe, you really realize that for every star in the sky, that's one of us. We are the stars. And what are they trying to do? They're completely trying to harness our energy. So that would put them to the type one when they were able to complete that. So these are these are beings that are just totally psychopathic and, and they're going to keep going as long as we let them. Absolutely. So again, when we talk about we are having a 3D experience on these you know, planetary bodies for learning, for growth, for enjoyment too. Absolutely. Because ultimately, what's the higher self? It's something so much greater that, again, people don't understand who they really are. You don't understand how, how amazing you are, your creative potential. You know, there are a, a lot of myths, and it's not just Greek mythology. There's many, many myths where, and Cindy was touching on something I didn't know she was going to touch on, but where a person leaves a body and they're placed up, mm -hmm. in, up in the heavens as either a star or, or a star system. There's a lot of truth there. Right. You know, this is simply the densest form of that star. So when you begin to understand energy and how it works and how things work in the 3D, that's exactly what they're trying to do here is they're trying to harness us, ourselves, and, and look at the measures they're going to. I mean, they want to put things in our bodies to, you know, be able to control our every move, our every thought. So they're trying to reach this you know, one, and they're just not going to stop until they get it. But we have a responsibility in that. We have the ability to push back. Was it Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young? I remember the Woodstock uh, song. You know, we are stardust, yes. and we have to get ourselves back to the garden. Well, you know, that whole, that whole kind of awakening <clears throat> that was happening in the 60s which got twisted and distorted in so many ways again they're always looking to twist and distort it, the, the, there, there is so much truth there you know because this is not we're not meant to be slaves we're not meant to be spending so much at work you are co-creators so creative in, endeavors what would you like to do we, you know this is what we should be doing what do you like to do well that's what you should be doing not, not, you know, banking, uh, yeah, unless, you know, there's parts of you that likes to count change, but of course it's all digital numbers and all that's an illusion to control us in the first place. But yet we have a deadly tornado, at least three lives lost over in Matador, te Texas. Again, uh, please do send your prayers and positive intentions over there. They're, they're still looking for people. Again, massive destruction. Uh, this is all part of, you know, this, this time, as we know, you know, they've, they've told us to expect this at, in the quote unquote end times. And, you know, there's so many people that have the best intentions out there and, you know, they may understand again, awaken to part of the system, but, but then be totally asleep to other parts. Let's do our best to share what we know with everyone out there. Again, let's do our best to liberate humanity as we see the massive destructions. And look at the cloud tops there, 65,000 feet. It's amazing what technology can do. Not that uh, pole shifts don't happen. Sure, they, they can happen. But when we look into all these things energetically, this is technology in play primarily as you see a tornado on the ground south of armstrong texas and we, you know we find this going on all over the globe as well sunrise at my own volcano in the philippines today as you see you know when the world has a fever which they are inducing 
a fear in Mother Earth, you know, she's going to have to cool herself down. And the clouds are going to do that. Ultimately, you know, what do we have? Well, we're going to have a lot of volcanic activity. We are going to have a lot of unrest. We are going to have a lot of uh, major earth change looking disasters and true earth change disasters in response to what's going on technologically. And there's a disease outbreak among uh, many of the people over here in the Philippines as well. Now, is this just simply coming from uh, stuff being emitted from within the volcano? Or is it not just the volcanic emissions? Are there some other emissions that are going on blending in with the volcanic emissions? At least 628 individuals between 2 and 64 have contracted various illnesses, including fever, colds, coughs gastroenteritis, acute respiratory infection, and skin disease. And I saw one post where they were talking about, you know, needing ventilators to help people. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Five new volcanoes came online this last week. 17 ongoing emissions. It's going to get much, much more active. We'll see activity in the Pacific Northwest probably within a year's time. And if we look over here, we do see there was a M-class, although right now the KP is relatively quiet. Uh, looks like about two and a half to three or hair over three. And the Schumann quieted down some too to 58. Gosh, I remember when we saw these spikes and used to say, what's happening? <laughs> oh, Oh, the consciousness of the planet is changing. People are waking up and they're saying, you know, why do we have floods going on and these wildfires coming in out of nowhere? Why are, why are wildfires starting all of a sudden in, in like a multitude of different spots at exactly the same time? Uh, you know, this is up in Alberta. <clears throat> As you see, both things, the fires and also the floods at the same time. And James Webb Space Telescope finds water in the asteroid belt hinting at the origin of Earth's oceans. You know, it, and some will go to the extreme and say that we live in a bubble and space is an ocean. Well, that is in some ways not inaccurate because space is full of life. It's not a vacuum. It's not a void. No, you know, there, it's full of life and it's full of the potential for life. But we don't live in an impenetrable dome. In fact, beings are coming and going all the time. In fact, we can come and go if we learn how to astral project and remote view. And in the future, in, in the not too distant future, yeah, when when humans want to go explore, they could simply will be going into a meditative state and they'll be going off planet and interacting. And some people do right now. I know, and and they keep. What they keep doing is they keep advertising, oh, you know, you'll be able to get on a rocket and go to the moon. Oh, get on this ship and go to the depths of the ocean. But the reality of it is, is we can do that ourselves, that they're always planting these things outside of our consciousness, keeping us looking outside, not understanding that, you know, to go anywhere we want. We just simply need to go within and we're developing those skills day by day. People are waking up moment by moment and realizing that things don't have to be so controlled. No, absolutely. Full spot. You know, they're, they're nobody's fool. They understand. And this guy's trying to make the game, but you know... Oh, it's just so tiring in this world. It's just so tiring, so exhausting keeping up with everything. I think I'm going to get a little shut-eye. You, you tell me who wins. As always, guys, thanks for your support over on Patreon and Ko-Fi. And I hope you guys are having an awesome day out there. Anybody that needs to set up an appointment, you could reach us at evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com. Much love, God bless, and namaste. Namaste.